Good morning, Hojo staff, students, and families. Ya Ateyabena, we're ready to start our day. So everybody, please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Our voices are off and bodies are still. Eyes are on the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, March 31st, the last day of March. Used to be a saying, uh, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. I don't remember how March came in, but it seems like kind of a, a quiet day today. So hopefully the weather uh, holds. So we have some music. And Mrs. Neff has secured some music for us. And I hope you have had a chance to watch that little clip on our YouTube channel. Tell me who we're listening to, what the name of the piece is and the composer. Do you remember? Edvard Grieg from Pierre Gint. And it's not Sweet Number One Morning, right? It's a different piece. In the Hall of the Mountain King, another selection from that same suite. In the Hall of the Mountain King, Pierre Gint by, by Edvard Grieg. Okay, artist this week. We have Rosa. Bonner, right? Rosa Bonner is our artist of the last two weeks, actually. And she's famous for her paintings of animals, very realistic paintings of animals. And she's from the Bordeaux region in France. And so when she's drawing these or painting these pictures of animals, it's from her experience as a person living in the, around the 1850s and 60s, or where most of the selections that we've been showing this week. So here's the first one we lock, we talked about, right? Plowing the Neverne. The oxen plowing the Neverne. Do you remember the next one we watched or we looked at was the the horse fair. This one took her two years to paint. Remember? Can you imagine doing one thing for two years? Painting a picture. That's perfection. Okay, and we have gathering for the hunt. Remember we said this is what it looks like in a hunt in France in the 1850s. And then yesterday we met the Highland Shepherd. Remember we talked about the Highlands are the area, the area in Scotland. It's more of a traditional area where people speak Gaelic or had been speaking Gaelic. And I'm sure in the 1850s they'd been speaking Gaelic and wearing kilts um, and different their cloaks with their and you know their cloaks and their kilts all have a certain pattern, a tartan that is. Uh, that identifies their family. So you'd see different types of uh, clothing that represented their family. Um, and um, their families were their clans. And that's similar to what we have here in Navajo land, right? We have clans, people, our families are um, divided up into different types of clan or different names, clans. And so the same thing in the Highlands. And they herded sheep, which is also very common um, here in Navajo country. So. The Highland Shepherd. There he is. So today we have the last picture in our series on Rosa Bonheur. And this one is weaning the calves. Remember what like weaning is taking the, uh, the baby calves away from the mom so they can grow up and to be adult uh, cows on their own. And this was a painting done um, 
on the border of France and Spain. And you can see in the background the mountain range, the Pyrenees Mountains in the background. And you can see the mother cow kind of anxiously trying to get to her cow, her little calves and the calves are trying to get to the mom. But there's a fence separating them because it's time for them to grow up. Um, it's tough. It's tough. Tough stuff. So here is Weaning the Calves from 1879, uh, Rosa Bonheur. Okay, maybe you've noticed in the hallways, there's some new artwork that's up. Uh, some of the things that we've been talking about this year, um, some beard stat, um, and some bougaro. Um, there's um, an Anthony Van Dyke painting that we just put up. A number of paintings have just been put up in the hall. So when you come down to the main building, look around and see what we have there. Okay, poem. Our poem this week is by Edna St. Vincent, do you remember? Malay, Edna St. Vincent Malay, and the name of the piece is Afternoon on a Hill. I will be the gladdest thing under the sun. I will touch a hundred flowers and not pick one. I will look at cliffs and clouds with quiet eyes, watch the wind bow down the grass and the grass rise. And when lights begin to show up from the town, I will mark which must be mine and then start down. She says that she'll be the gladdest thing under the sun. What makes you the gladdest thing under the sun? And if you had to write a poem about it, what would it sound like? What things would you talk about? And then it's good to know. It's good to know what makes you happy, right? What, what sort of things? And surrounding yourself with good, true, and beautiful things uh, will make you happy. So that's why we're doing our poetry and our art and music so you know what these things are that can bring happiness to you. Um, we have been reviewing the Declaration of Independence and thank you to the fourth grade who have volunteered to, um, to um, say the Declaration of Independence when Secretary of Education, Mr. Uh, Dr. Stewart, is here on Monday. So thank you to them for offering to do that. I might come around and you never know, we might have to ask you to do the preamble to the Constitution, but we practice that every day, so you should be ready. So let's do the Declaration of Independence together. Remember it starts with when in the course of human events. Let's do it together. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And all, accordingly, all experience has shown that that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. And for the support of this declaration, with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Okay, friends, birthdays. We do have one birthday today. 
Madison is having a birthday. Happy birthday, Madison. I hope you have a great day. Announcements, we have a special visitor today. His name is Mr. Johnson. He is coming to us from Modesto, California. He is the athletic director of a junior high school there. Uh, and he is here to help us figure out how we're going to uh, run our PE program and our fitness program for next year. Um, I know this has been a tough year. Many of us have just been um, hanging around the house or watching too much TV, maybe not getting enough exercise, maybe eating some bad, not so good things, maybe not so bad, but not so good. Um, and we need to get back into, <clears throat> get reinvigorate ourselves and to look at how do we become fit. So that's going to be a focus of next year. So he's here to help us get that started because he's done that at his school in uh, California. Um, other announcements are we do not have school on Friday, so this Friday, no school. And uh, when we come back on Monday, remember Dr. Stewart from the Secretary, the Secretary of Education in New Mexico will be here for a short visit in the morning. Um, and <clears throat> that's all I have. Oh, <clears throat> basketball. First game tonight. Good luck to our boys and girls basketball team as they play through. So um, that's all we have for today. So now let's do our student pledge. I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day today.